Did you guys ever get given a free quad in the woods? I can what? Yup, that's right. I got this KFX 700 for free. And I'm a little worried about this guy. And if you stick around, I'm gonna tell you guys the story of how I came about on this KFX 700. So, let's get it going, guys. So yes, this KFX 700 might be in pretty rough shape. Definitely needs a good bit of work, but I think I scored a hell of a deal off of Random Woods Guy. Check this out. I was riding Wes's quad out in the woods one day, just kind of testing it out because the chain would constantly pop off of this thing into the side case of the engine. And I came across this guy. Check this footage out. What this clown's doing? Huh? Thank God for you. Thank God for me. Why? I've been there, brother. I know how it goes. I can what? So at this point, I was obviously a little skeptical about this, but I did do a VIN check on the four-wheeler and it did turn out to be the guy's quad. So I was very ecstatic to get this KFX 700. I need you to turn that around. I got a tow strap here in my bag and we'll get that thing hooked up and get it back. Okay, Bo, thanks. All right, man, got you. Just uh, don't look at my porno mags or steal my monsters and we're good, bro. <laughs> That's a nice hat there. Where do you get that sucker from? This sounds like it. Saved your day. Just didn't save your four wheeler. piece of junk strap anyways. Yeah, that thing's got a lot of torque, you know? It does have a lot of torque. What's in that mother Can you tell me? A that three, thing's a, got a lot, a lot of torque. A 388 that's worn the hell out. Yeah, it's a 388. With a bad transmission. Can't even get her in neutral. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all right, go slow this time, yeah, all right? Take it easy, that first thing go off. Let's go both the first. Yep, I'll take it easy. Uh, all right, Chong, you ready? Yeah. All right. Alright, there we go. We're moving now. Alrighty then, he's back there singing. Well the good thing is we're not really far from the from the uh, parking spot. I 
appreciate it. I gotta go get my buddy and get this here thing loaded up, so. Oh, What's this? Okay, this is Joe's. Hey, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's good talking to you. All righty. Have a good one, pal. Thanks for the free KFX 700. I am a firm believer in things happen for a reason and I stumbled across this for a good reason. So I went ahead and ordered everything that I think we need to get this thing in operational condition again. I combed through some of the stuff that was already taken off of the quad in the middle of the woods and it looks like it was sitting in the woods for a hot minute. But anyways, I think I have everything here, gasket kit, uh, battery, I have um, the water pump and stator cover. The carburetors are already torn off, so I could take a look at those while they're off. But yeah, guys, check it out. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I, I don't think this is too bad of a score, but who knows? This thing could be a clapped out piece of crap. It could be knocking, smoking. Who knows? I haven't seen it run or anything like that yet. So let's take a second. Let's dive into the KFX 700 and let's get it running. So obviously the first thing we're going to tackle is this side case cover stator slash water pump slash timing area slash bunch of components in one. We're gonna hit this side of the engine first. Uh, I don't have a lot of experience with KFX 700s, although I have ridden a couple of them and I do love the way they run and ride. I think they are monsters with this 700 V-Twin and they were definitely advanced for the year that these things came out. So Kawasaki definitely had a good hold on this quad. And I always loved the V-Twin, even when it was in the Prairie utility quads. And then when they brought this out a couple years later, I was beyond stoked. I wanted to get on one right away. So it was really cool to be able to acquire one of these and uh, just get to know them a little bit better. And who knows, man, this thing could be a ripper when it's done. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna get a lot of this assembled and put back together. We'll get the carburetors cleaned out. I've got a battery on the charger for this thing already. And then I'll probably empty the gas, change the gas out, check the spark plugs, check the valve clearances, check the compression, and just kind of comb through some of the wiring and see if there's any other big things that I should look out for. So let's get it. Getting started with this stator cover and water pump assembly. This cover was already removed when I acquired this ATV, so it kind of makes me wonder what may have been going on with this engine to make it not run and leak as the previous owner stated. So we will reinstall the cover with a new gasket because if it does have spark, we can leave the cover on for now. All right, guys, so unfortunately, after all of that work, uh, putting the new fresh battery in, putting the stator back on, this thing still doesn't have spark. I then realized there was no coils to even check spark, so I had to order those. We got those in, they're installed, no spark, fresh spark plug, it's not showing anything. When you turn the key switch on, all the lights come on, the neutral lights on, and I can hear the fuel pump coming on, but there's still no spark. So my assumption is, that the stator on this thing is just fried out 
or the pickup coil. And so what I did was I ordered a Caltrix stator off of Amazon. Now, I'm not a huge fan of Chinese staters, but in some applications, they do seem to work okay. So I'm gonna test it out on this one. This was a little bit pricier. I think this was around the $50, $60 range where typically you pay for the Caltrix staters or any Chinese brand stator. They're in the $20 to $30 range and they come with a bunch of extra stuff like voltage regulator, uh, cheap no-name brand spark plug that I wouldn't trust in a Chinese four-wheeler. So anyways, with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed quick. It also did come with a voltage regulator. So I'm going to change one out at a time and see if that helps affect the spark issue but that doesn't exactly narrow it down if we don't have spark because it could just be that the Chinese stator doesn't work anyway. So let's give it our best shot, guys. Since we already installed the cover once in this video, I'm gonna skip doing it again and avoid the pain in hopes of getting some pleasure as an end result. We have to remove the current stator and reinstall the Caltrick Amazon one. Thankfully, this is a pretty easy process. There also really doesn't look to be anything wrong with the one out of this KFX 700, but I can't tell if it is an OEM one or not. However, when I ohm tested both, the Caltrick tested at 0.7 ohms, while the one from the KFX 700 tested at 0.5 ohms. This could be our issue, but let's get it reinstalled and check it out. Now that we have some spark, let's get the fluids filled up and ready for a first test fire and see if she's alive or if she's gonna be a Debbie Downer. All right guys, so now that we got most of the stuff taken care of on the KFX 700, we got the stator and pickup coil put on, we've got the coolant filled, we've got the oil put into place, and we've also got the valve clearances set. It's four to six thousandths on the intake and six to eight thousandths on the exhaust using a feeler gauge. And we got that all, stuff all set up. Some of the exhaust valves were a little tight. And so that could have definitely been a running issue at some point for the previous owner. Uh, so the next thing we're going to tackle is the carburetors. This, these things are looking pretty dang angry. So we're going to take these out. I'm going to, I'm going to take the float bowls off real quick. I got some quick little hand tools here. We'll blow the jets out. We'll get these things looking a okay, get them all cleaned up. So there's no dust, dirt, debris, nasty ethanol buildup or anything like that inside the carbs. And then we get fresh fuel in the tank. I'm going to drain the tank out and then we'll try and first start this sucker and see what she does. Let's go ahead and pop these float bowls off real quick. These look to be in really great shape. I have a feeling that these are not dirty at all. There's no buildup. I bet you if I had to put gas in this, it literally would have just ran. Yeah, I mean, I can blow right through that, no problem. Let's go ahead and shove that back in there. Yeah, I mean, these jets look great. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with them. I will adjust the air screws while I'm in here because you will not get to these once the carburetors are on the machine. The only thing is I cannot blow through the float bowls. So I will grab my airline and try and blow through them quick. I just saw stuff, sp oh yeah, that's caked with dirt. That would have been an issue. Okay, let's go ahead and get these put back together and then we're gonna fire up the squad and see if she starts.
All right, so now that we got the carburetors installed, they're cleaned up, they're ready to go. There was some issues with the coolant line routing for the carburetors. I wasn't quite sure how to route one or two of the lines. I looked through every Kawasaki diagram for the KFX 700 that I could find. And I read that a lot of guys were actually plugging these lines off when they ride more in the warmer conditions. So since here in PA, we really don't get below 20 degrees very often. I decided to get rid of that because in the summer, when you heat the carburetors up, it will most definitely take some of your power away by making all of the air being introduced into the intake a little bit warmer, uh, basically the temperature of your atmosphere. So with that being said, I went and capped off all those ones going to the carburetors. It's a common mod on cars and trucks too. Um, I had some Hondas we used to do that with back in the day and Mitsubishi Eclipse where they would route it through the throttle body. We would get rid of that altogether because we want the intake charge to be as cool as possible. That is the most dense air that is going in and provides the uh, best charge for combustion. So with that being said, moving on, We've got the fuel line connected. The, fuel, the air filter is looking pretty rowdy. I uh, don't know if we're gonna be running that. Probably get a new one of those or at least give that thing a serious bath. But we've got fuel coming into the carbs. I have no starting fluid yet. I didn't use anything to start it up yet. We're gonna try and dry start it. We know the spark's good. So let's go ahead and give this thing a first fire, guys. See if she fires up. So I hear the fuel pump, that's a good sign. Sounds like it wants to, but the neutral light's not staying on. Come on, baby. Oh, she's backfiring. Come on. Come on. You're right there, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on, baby. I'm going to set this filter on just to give it some more vacuum. And hopefully that helps choke it out just a little bit. All right, well, the battery's gotta get charged and we'll try again with a fresh charge. All right, guys, so as you can see, I kind of tore this thing apart a little bit more. Um, I have my sad face on right now because I have some bad news. After cranking this thing over, it did sound like it wanted to start up, but it just kept backfiring and kind of like puttering a little tiny bit. One thing I noticed when turning this over by hand to do the valve clearances was that it turns over really, really easily by hand, even with the spark plugs in. So I went ahead and I took the carbs off and I double checked the valve clearances on this and sure enough, they were still within spec. Then I decided to custom make a little piece for my Harbor Freight compression tester because I didn't have the proper plug size for this. So I drilled out a spark plug and tap the back to fit this in and then I compression tested it. The front cylinder was about 27 PSI and the rear cylinder was about 35 PSI. So with that being said, this thing is, you know, extremely low on compression. It's not enough to ignite the fuel and air, which makes sense because this thing, need, you know, these need about 100 PSI at a bare minimum to squeeze the fuel and air properly to allow this thing to run. On two strokes, usually you can get away with like 90 PSI four strokes somewhere in the 100 to 110 range, but that's like the minimum on the service level. It might even be 120 in the manual, but I've seen them run, you know, around 100 PSI per cylinder. But, you know, then we run into like 
you know, smoking issues and stuff like that. So then I was like, well, is this thing even worth rebuilding or is this like, you know, part it out deal on Marketplace? So uh, I took my little Amazon special. I have this cute little boroscope tool. It's like $15 on Amazon. It's one of my best, best buys. You know, I'm not gonna drop you a link in the description, but the part number is on the bag. I don't think they sell the exact same one anymore, but if you go to like Amazon or eBay and type in boroscope tool for phone, they're 15, 20 bucks. They're the best, coolest little investment. You know, it's way better than a snap-on tool because you don't have to pay 1,500 or three grand or whatever they cost these days. And then you can check all of your holes. You can go in the intakes, you can go in the exhaust if you take the exhaust off, and you can go in the spark plug. Now, here's the interesting part. Now, this quad has been sitting in my shop for a very long time, and this is why this is important. So I checked the intakes, none of the valves look bent which is a good sign. That means it might be worth rebuilding. Everything looks to be in time. When I turn it over by hand, it doesn't, like there's no crazy slack in the timing chain or anything like that. So I stuck the borescope tool in the spark plug hole and you can see that there is uh, oil ring marks and ring marks on the side of the cylinder that look like that's where the rings were sitting for a very long time. I can't tell if it's corrosion, like a rust, or if it's literally just, you know, oil that sat there for a very long time and kind of stained the cylinder a little bit. But what I can tell you is those marks tell me the rings are probably frozen into the piston from sitting for a very long time. We call that ring sticking. They're stuck in place. So with that being said, I think what I'm gonna do is call it kaput on this video. We're gonna get a top end order for this thing. And then I, I might just do rings and a gasket kit. Maybe we'll do a top end. I'm gonna go online, see what they cost. If it's even worth putting, you know, Weissco pistons in it or something like that. But I actually pondered around doing a full build on this KFX because I really do like the KFX 700s. So it would be cool to strip this whole thing down, you know, powder coat the frame, do a whole build on it. That way I can have this one for my collection. But, you know, I can't afford to do that with every four-wheeler and dirt bike that comes in here uh, or every creation that I do. So, with that being said, if you guys like this and you want to see a full build on it, drop me a comment below, say full build, and if I get enough of them, I'll do a full build on this sucker because I have to see if the audience is, actually wants to see this thing get built or if you'd rather just see it be, you know, a fine flip fix type deal. So, uh, anyways, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Peace out.